I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and I made a video yesterday that mentioned the test that I was going to be running during the emergency. You know, you guys all got it too. Test of the National Wireless Emergency Alert System. The purpose is to maintain and improve alert and warning capabilities at the federal, state, local, tribal, and territorial levels, and to evaluate the nation's public alert and warning capabilities. No action is required by the public. Okay. That is interesting. Uh, th this was actually the more interesting of the two tests. One was to put a phone in a Faraday cage and to see if it would get, um, you know, get, you know, get the alert. And the other was to take this phone, which does not have cell service. I don't. Uh, this is an old track phone that I'd had on, um, you know, another plan that I let lapse a couple years ago, and I just kind of, I've, I've kept it, I've kept it charged, and. Uh, that's kind of a neat idea that uh, you don't have to have an active cell service plan in order to have a device that can pick up the the alerts. Now I'm just going to click the OK here. OK and OK, and I cleared it, cleared it out. And that's kind of interesting. That's uh, that's useful knowledge to know that um, you know if you if you can't afford a cell phone plan and you want to have some kind of a, a way of getting these emergency alerts. Apparently, you can just get any old phone, whether it has uh, you know, a cell plan or not, you're going to be able to get the, the alerts on that. What I wanted to talk about for the rest of this video uh, were some of the things that we would be doing right now if this had not been a just a test. Uh, these are uh, little uh, lists of uh, you know, kind of action items. If you guys have been watching my channel, you know that we have a fallout shelter. We took a root cellar and we kind of retrofitted it into a fallout shelter. It's not a perfect fallout shelter, but it's, uh, you know, it's a heck of a lot better than having nothing. And I think it would serve us pretty well for a couple of weeks at the very least, uh, you know, to you know, be able to, to shelter in place in there if we ever needed to. But it's not as simple as just kind of running into a hole and, uh, you know, starving to death and, you know, dying of, you know, not being able to breathe. You need to have the systems in place in there. You need to have the assets in place. But you also have things that you probably want to do with the last minute. And that's what these action lists are for. So if we were to get an emergency alert signal and it was, you know, an actual real deal, you know, there's things that we would need to do before we went into our shelter. Now, whether you have your own personal shelter or you're going to be trying to use a public shelter, uh, you know, there are certainly things that you want to do ahead of either of those circumstances. And these are some of the things that we're going to be doing while going into our own private shelter. Uh, there are lists for myself, uh, for Amber, and for River uh, to do, and that's uh, for a variety of reasons. One is because there's a lot to do, so you can divide it up among uh, the different people in your family. That can make it so there's less for any one person. Uh, also, I think that if there was in a situation like that, I, I think, at least for myself, it helps to have something to do and not just kind of see, uh, you know, the adults running around and, you know, doing their thing. And if, like, you're just a kid, you're just sitting idle, you know, and you have nothing to do with but, you know, be frightened or whatever. So I think it's good to divide things up amongst different people. Obviously, uh, things that are, are more more critical, I put more in, you know, my uh, category and things that are maybe a little bit less critical, I put over in, you know, River's category. Uh, so, you know, if he is nervous or he can't, uh, he can't manage it at the time, you know, I, you know, I can step in and, and take care of those things if there's time uh, later on. But I'm just going to go through them uh, right now. Uh, the first thing that is on my list is that we have an air intake for the house uh, that uh, is drawing air into our home. Uh, and if uh, that is filtered air, uh, but it's also f sharing the same filtering system that goes into our, our fallout shelter. So the first thing for me to do is to close the vent that goes into the house because when we start reversing uh, the suction and pulling things into the fallout shelter, I don't want to be drawing air in from the house. That would uh, not really be a problem necessarily for the fallout shelter, uh, but it would create a negative suction inside of our house and then we'd be drawing radioactive particles from outside into the house. And if we're not able to evacuate or, or there's nowhere to evacuate to later and we kind of have to move back into the house later on, I'd rather have less of that stuff inside than more. So we want to shut off the air that's uh, being pulled into the house. Uh, the next thing I want to do is shut down the wood stove. If it happens to be, you know, a, a burning season, uh, I don't want to just leave the fire going. You know, usually the fire just kind of burns itself out anyway, but I'll shut the dampers and shut everything down uh, to put that, put that out. 
Um, we all oftentimes, especially in the winter, well, only in the winter time, really, uh, we'll leave uh, one of the windows in the pantry uh, open in order to let cold air into the pantry. Uh, I would want to close that window, and that's on my list. We have uh, a wire that is running into the shelter that uh, can bring us uh, internet. Uh, you know, as to whether or not if there was like an emergency, internet would even still be working, I don't honestly know. But it, it's, it was as simple as just running a coaxial wire, wire from the house into the shelter, along with the water and the power lines that were running anyway. I just had to run the, the cable over there, and the only action that I need to do is I need to take the... Uh, uh, the cable that runs into the router in the house and pull it out and swap it with the wire that runs into the, the shelter. And that will give us the ability, if internet's functioning, to have that as a way of getting information or, you know, to be honest, just entertainment uh, for it to uh, relieve boredom. Uh, the next thing I need to do is to turn on water to the shelter. We don't, we have water running to the shelter, we have a sink out there, uh, but I don't leave that stuff pressurized, you know, all the time. Like, what if it developed a leak or something like that? I you know, I, I would not want to be in a situation where I run out into the shelter and it's like, oh, this place turned into a swimming pool. So I would, uh, one of my things is to turn water onto the shelter. I do have it running through a pressure limiter uh, because the, the domestic uh, pressure of the water in the house is 50 PSI and it doesn't need to be anywhere near that out in the shelter. So I have it running through a limiter to um, you know, help reduce the chance that there would ever be any kind of a rupture. Uh, the next thing that I need to do is turn off the water that goes into the house past the point of the split that runs into the shelter. Uh, and that is just a way of like if there was any damage in the house or something like that uh, or a leak developed somewhere in the house I wouldn't want our our water to just kind of run dry you know while it pumps you know to flood our, our house out so we, we're turning off the house and turning on the shelter uh, next thing is I turn off the air exchanger that uh, brings air into the house you know just because we're not going to be there there's no reason to be pressurizing air into the house uh, the next thing I'm doing is we do have some cash in the house and in case you know It'd be a great time to go looting if you don't mind, you know, if you've got a full radiation suit or if you don't mind getting cancer later in your life. Uh, it would be a great time for people to go looting, so I want to take a lot of valuables out of the house, bring them into the shelter with us. Cash, a cash box is one thing that I wanted to take. Uh, and at, at this point, everything I've done so far has been little uh, errands around the house. Flip this, turn that, open this, close that. Uh, and this, this is the first point where I pick something up and it needs to go to the shelter. So I have a, a note right on the list, trip out to the shelter. So it's very clear to me when I'm in a situation where it, it's kind of, uh, you know, hectic and I don't want to really have to think or I might be kind of fielding questions from other people. Uh, I, it, it takes all the thinking out of my brain, it puts it on the paper, and I know now that I've grabbed the cash box, go out to the shelter. Uh, next thing I do is I come back and I have what's called a special tub. Uh, all of us have like one special tub of stuff that, uh, you know, we just have ready to move in. It's things that we, you know, use during regular times also, but it's something that it contains things that you'd want to move out there. It could be like special things, photographs, you know, we, you know, any personal items. We each of us have this thing called our special tub. It's about, you know, it's just a little plastic tub about that big. Uh, so I grab that and I'm, I start filling it up with things. We're moving ammunition out there. We're moving some um, uh, different pistols uh, go in there. I'm going into the library and there are a, a list of books that I want to grab from the library as reading material in there, not for entertainment. We already have entertainment books out there. But these are uh, books about, uh, you know, radiation uh, mitigation, radiation emergencies. I don't have multiple copies of these. Uh, you know, it'd be a great idea to have multiple copies, but, you know, I'm not made of money. So uh, we've got, I think it's like three, three books in the library we want to grab, throw in the, in the bin. Uh, next thing is, and this is for entertainment, is that we've got some hard drives that have movies on them. We're going to grab those and put them in the bin. Uh, I also have a Nintendo Switch. That's both for entertainment and also that's where I, I have an exercise program to the Nintendo Switch called Ring Fit. And uh, I absolutely am in love with that thing. And uh, it would be a great opportunity over two weeks to you know, have some way of exercising you know, that's not super, super boring. So grab that. And then another, it has a note right here, trip out to the shelter. So I filled it up out to the shelter. Uh, next thing I come back, I'm grabbing laptops. Uh, you know, my laptop, River's laptop, um, and uh, and also the power supplies, and trip out to the shelter at that point. And, and that is for, you know, being able to access the internet, and also just for, you know, entertainment and fun. Okay, uh, if, at this point I have a note for me to check to be sure everyone is done in the house. Uh, and uh, simultaneously, while I'm doing my list, uh, Amber and River are doing their lists, and I need to check with them to make sure that they have accomplished everything in the house because the next thing that I'm going to be doing is turn off any any breakers that are not the shelter breakers. There are a couple of uh, breakers that are uh, 
running power to the shelter or they are powering something that runs to the shelter, like you know the well pump to pump water out into the shelter. There are a couple, a couple breakers that we need to leave on. I have them clearly marked in the breaker box with little arrows on them. Those stay on and everything else goes off. It's just gonna uh, save us battery power. We have solar uh, voltaics up on the roof and I want every drop of that power going to things that we actually need, not like running some like, uh, you know, like, you know, recharging these batteries over on my battery recharge station. It's like, you know, I think we can do without that for a couple of weeks while we're in the shelter. So we're gonna uh, focus all the power into the shelter, but I don't wanna turn those things off if other people are still running through the house because like, what if it's nighttime and there's no lights because, you know, dad turned off all the all the power to the, uh, to the whole house. So I have to check with everyone. And then if everyone's done, then I can turn off the breakers. If everyone's not done, I suppose I would just, uh, asked to assist or something like that. Um, uh, after I turn off the breakers, uh, the next thing for me is to lock all the doors, uh, you know, for what it's worth. Uh, you know, we've got plenty of windows in the house and people could easily break through those, but you know, it's it's one kind of uh, social, mental, emotional deterrent that people are like, eh, you know, it's locked, I'm not gonna go in. Um, but you know, plenty of people just break a window too. So, you know, for what it's worth. Uh, and then the last thing that I am going to be doing is we have a series of camping bags. They are also used as our presumptive uh, bug out bags. It's a modular system. I've got like a, a camping bag full of camping tools, a bedding bag full of bedding and stuff like that. There's a food bag. There's um, you know a, a mess kit bag. All these different bags. And uh, I always bring those with me when I go camping because it's easy to pack up when I go camping. I always kind of brag. It's like, you know, if I, if I needed to, I could be camping in 15 minutes because everything's already really packed. The only thing I ever have to pack when I go camping is just throw some clothes in a throw some clothes in a bag, uh, you know, for uh, for changing into. And incidentally, we do have clothes to change into already in the shelter. They're all the ugly clothes that nobody ever likes to wear, but you know they're perfectly good, so we put them out there. Uh, so I'm going to be grabbing all of our camping bags, uh, not because I, I need like um, uh, you know an entrenchment tool <laughs> in the shelter. Although you know, if I guess we, if we got buried in or something like that, maybe I'd, I'd be happy that I had that. But um, all those bags just have a variety of all sorts of things. There's redundant things, and uh, you know, it's just a, a little extra piece of mind knowing that all the stuff that, you know, sur uh, supplies us and sustains us when we go camping, we're going to have in there with us. Um, so uh, that, that's why I'm grabbing that. And if there's time, uh, this is the garden area over here. Can you tell? Because it's all, all weeds. Um, if there's time, I have black pa plastic tarps and they're right near where all the uh, camping bags are. Uh, if there's time, I would take those and I'd kind of run them across the garden so that if we had fallout dust uh, coming down from the sky and it kind of blankets the whole area, it would kind of keep the garden area a bit a little bit less intense uh, so that there's not as much of those kind of you know radioactive metals in the garden itself um, you know why, why would I do that you know because you know after this thing happens as soon as you can you would leave right well who knows you know what if you can't what if there's really nowhere to go to what if it seems like you know as bad as things are here they may very well be worse in other places or there's just an information blackout and you know we're just we're not going to leave anywhere because we don't we don't know of a better place to go to you know, we may end up st sticking around here, even though, you know, the, the area, you know, has radioactive dust on it. So uh, covering up the garden beds would make it so that if we're growing some of our own food, it's going to have that le much less radio radiation in it. And it'll probably be better than things that you might be able to buy at the store because, you know, all the commercial farmland would uh, probably already be blanketed. And, you know, I'm sure the government will issue, uh, you know, uh, uh, announcements letting everyone know that the food supply is safe, you know, which essentially translates to is as safe as we can get it now, uh, practically speaking. So that's what I do. And then, uh, you know, I head into the shelter. Uh, next is Amber's uh, list of things to do. Uh, and, th and this is happening, like I mentioned, simultaneous to what I would be doing. Uh, she is moving sprouting containers uh, from the house into the shelter. Uh, sprouts are a really great way of getting some fresh greens. You don't need sunlight for them, uh, and it'd be great to kind of keep those going so people have access to fresh greens uh, while you know while they're in the shelter for a couple of weeks. I think that'd be uh, great on a number of uh, uh, on a number of levels. And then it says right out here, take a trip to the shelter because that's that's enough stuff to carry. Um, and I, I've got some little notes that I've added here. I gotta make some new versions of this. Um, this is bring the router to the shelter and um Okay, yeah, it says bring the router to the shelter. I found out because we actually did a test. Te doing really you know, doing tests is a great way to find out what's actually working on it. It's getting hot in the sun. Shade that. 
Uh, so uh, we did an actual test and I found out that even though I had two routers, I happened to have a backup router, uh, not, not like for prepping reasons. I, I, I had two houses at one point uh, and I had a router at one and a router at the other. So I kept the, kept the router from both houses. And I was thinking that I could take the second router and just leave that in the fallout shelter. And, you know, as soon as we swap over the cable, like I mentioned, that that would solve the problem and we'd... Uh, We'd be able to use the second router, but as it turns out, that's not the way that it works, and I actually have to contact the uh, the cable uh, internet company and tell them this is the new router and give them the ID number so they can like activate it and everything. And honestly, if we're in the uh, the opening stages of a nuclear war, <laughs> I, you know, I, tech support is bad enough under normal circumstances. It's like the missiles are flying, and you're like, yeah, um, I'd like to activate a new router, or you know, I I suppose you know, the, the people manning the calls probably aren't even in the United States anyway, so maybe it's, it'd be a non-issue. But uh, anyway, we're going to move the physical router that we know works over there, and that's Amber's job. Uh, her next thing is close and lock all windows and close all blinds. So we want to close the windows so that we don't have, like, obviously, you know, open air coming in and dust and radioactive fallout coming into the house. And we also want to close all the blinds. And the reason for that is what's called the stack effect, where if you have sunlight going into a house, it warms the air in the house. That air rises, uh, it kind of puts pressure up on the top of the house, there's always cracks somewhere, even if it's practice making the house, there's always cracks somewhere, even if just around the windows. Windows always have little cracks around, like, uh, you know, where they're tilting windows and all that kind of stuff. So, um, the, the air kind of pressurizes, pressurizes up the top, leaks out the top, and that creates a kind of a mild vacuum in the bottom, and the vacuum draws air in from outside, and that would bring radioactive dust with it. So we want to reduce that stack effect as much as we possibly can by closing the blinds so we're not warming the air inside, so... You know, we don't have that going on. Next, uh, move any special bedding and stuffed animals from Amber's bed. A Amber still has some stuffed animals, and that's fine. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you're in an emergency situation, it's, uh, you know, it's nice to have those things. Trip out to the shelter at that point, because, you know, a lot of stuffed animal there. Uh, next, uh, find my and Amber's phone and uh, the air quality sensor. Um, uh, so she's going to be grabbing our phones. That's another way of accessing information, you know, on online, uh, it, you know, if the internet is working. And the air quality sensor is a sensor that uh, will monitor things like radon and carbon dioxide and, uh, you know, let us know if the air quality in the, in the shelter is, is getting bad. We have uh, systems for bringing in fresh air, the filtered air. Um, but, uh, you know, we want to actually know if they're working, you know, aside from just like, well, we'll know if they aren't working if people start passing out. Um, so, you know, we, we want to have the uh, the devices there for that. So she's going to be grabbing those two things. She's going to get my backpack, which is kind of like my EDC uh, bag that I carry with me everywhere. That's kind of like the, the camping packs that I mentioned that uh, they just have a variety of stuff. My EDC pack is what it sounds like, my everyday carry bag. And it's got all sorts of uh, stuff in there. And... Um, uh, she's going to be grabbing that and then trip out to the shelter. And if you think about it, this is pretty well planned out because she's got a backpack on and she's got, uh, you know, phones and a charger. So her, her hands are full and her back's full. She's making a nice full trip out there. Uh, next thing uh, is she's moving snack foods from the pantry. Uh, just uh, It says grab some grocery bags from the greenhouse is where we keep our canvas bags and just grabbing a bunch of snack foods. We don't keep that kind of stuff out in the shelter area. So she's just going to go through and just, you know, willy nilly just grab everything. Uh, well, not everything, but, uh, you know, as much as she, she can, and then take a trip out to the shelter. She's going to come back in. She's going to get our radio from the kitchen, the radio that I wasn't sure whether or not it might have gone off during the alert, uh, and she's going to just carry that out to the shelter. Now, we do have a radio. We have two radios in the shelter, but uh, being able to get uh, information and communications in is really important. <laughs> you know, the more the better, so she's grabbing that as well. It's easy to grab, too. Uh, the way that it's, it's hooked up, uh, we have exterior antennas. We have a shortwave antenna and we have an FM antenna that are mounted and we have a coaxial screw-in uh, plugs for those. But I, I put an adapter on so instead of it screwing into the mount, it's just the kind that just pushes on and pulls off. So it's easy to just pop them out of the wall and, uh, you know, just grab the thing and run. And to be honest, I, I never even leave it plugged into the wall anyway in case it was like an EMP or even like a lightning uh, blast. I don't want that stuff getting directed down into the radio. So I, I, I tend to leave the thing unplugged except when I'm actually listening to it anyway. Her next step is to close all interior doors uh, and that is to again minimize that kind of stack effect. You don't want air moving through the house. Uh, so she's going to close all the interior doors. 
um, and she's gonna uh, grab some, you know, just uh, some last minute medications or anything like that. If anybody happens to be like, you know, has a cold or anything, it's like her, her, it'll be her job to grab that. Although last four years running, we've been 100% clean of all that stuff. So, you know, presumably that won't be the case, but uh, you know, we've got it on the list just in case. Uh, and we've got two, uh, two more items here, fill and move Amber's special tub, just like everyone else's special tub. That's like her last minute things, like her, you know, her iPad or whatever, you know, she wants to just throw in there. So it gives a nice, um, you know, ability to just carry a bunch of stuff all at once. Final trip out to the shelter, it says that for her. And then her last activity is once she's in the shelter, we have pressurized water going into the shelter. And we also have a bunch of five gallon uh, jugs uh, that are full of water with a little bit of uh, uh, chlorine bleach in them now, enough to kind of sanitize the water, not enough to make people sick. Um, and uh, we have some empty ones too, because if we can, I would much prefer to not be drinking the you know the bleach sanitized water. We have a Berkey filter out there, so all the water that we are going to drink, we can run through the, the Berkey filter, so that will kind of clean some of that out anyway. Uh, but we've got three levels of water. The first level is the fresh stuff that's coming right out of the house. But let's say we lose power, we lose that water, we can't use it. The second level is the the water that Amber is putting into the jugs the day of, so we get nice fresh water. Doesn't have any kind of chlorine in it or anything like that. Uh, but let's say there, there's an EMP pulse and like it knocks out our power, or it's like just a really unlucky day and the well bake breaks that day. We do have that that third backup, which is the, the chlorine treated water, uh, which is already sitting out there, uh, which I don't want to drink, but it's you'd, you'd appreciate it if you had nothing else. And the last thing is Rivers List, and the, Rivers List is just a half page um, because you know he's just a kid. Uh, her, uh, River's first thing is to move uh, blankets, pillows, and stuffed animals from his bed. Now, again, we've already got bedding out there, um, but you know this is giving him like you know kind of some of his special pillows and obviously his special stuffed animals. He has a hamster, uh, and he's going to uh, pick that up uh, after he does his first trip out to the shelter, um, and that was added to the the list uh, recently because he just got the hamster recently. Uh, the next thing for River is to move all sensible food from the fridge and use grocery bags from the greenhouse. Now, this one happens really early, whereas on Amber's list, when uh, she's kind of grabbing things in the kitchen area, uh, hers happens a little bit later. And the idea for this is that you don't have people bump, bumping elbows and, and banging into each other, uh, you know, trying to be in the same place at the same time. Uh, and we did do a run through of this to make sure that that didn't happen and, and it worked out uh, pretty well. So uh, he just fills up, you know, any sensible food from the fridge. Like if we just like bought some grapes or something like that, or some kind of like a expensive fruit, um, uh, it would just, it would absolutely murder my soul if I was in the shelter, not having any fresh fruits, and I'm like, oh, those those grapes, and I spent like $15 on those grapes, and they're rotting in the fridge right now. So all that kind of stuff that you know is going to spoil, we just bring it into the shelter, and it's like, yeah, we got like a party for the first couple of days before it goes bad. Uh, and he takes that uh, stuff out to the shelter, there's a note of that. Uh, next thing is move a broom to near the solar panels. We've got two sets of solar panels. One is on the roof of the house, and uh, some other ones are freestanding ones because we have two separate solar electric systems. One that powers the whole house, and one that is just for the fallout shelter. The fallout shelter does get power from the whole house, but if for some reason the main system went down, we've got the backup system uh, ready to go right inside the shelter. And what's nice about it is I can actually access the working parts of it. So if something needs to be serviced, you know, I can I can do some work on it and uh, you know actually get something done. Uh, why am I putting a broom near the solar panels? Well, uh, in the winter time, solar panels sometimes cover in snow. And if I needed to come out and clear the solar panels because the solar panels help to run the air filtration system, we have backups for that, like a manual pump. But you know, if it's been a couple of days and I can just suit up uh, and uh, you know some protective clothing and be in and out as quickly as I, or I'm sorry, out and in as quickly as I can, uh, then. Um, uh, you know, it might, it might be worth it very well to uh, you know, just run outside, sweep the uh, panels off, and get our electricity back, and then and then run back into the shelter. So he's going to have a broom right there, so I'm not looking around for a broom. It's right there. All right, uh, his next item is to uh, get two-week fish food uh, from the pantry and feed his fish one tablet. We bought them ahead of time. Those are the kind of things you use when you go on vacation. They're good for two weeks, and he's just going to pop one in his fish tank. So, you know, best best of luck to that fish. Um, it's the least that we can do, literally. <laughs> the le well, I guess doing nothing would be the least we can do, but uh, this is one step up from the least that we can do. Uh, next thing, uh, move any last books, toys, games. Um, uh, fill River's special tub and bring it downstairs and then uh, get his tablet computer, which is a special tablet he uses for some games, and put that in the tub and then that's his final trip out to the shelter. And we've got all of these all lined up because, you know, so much of that stuff, if I was trying to think about that la at the last minute, 
uh, or just say in a river, it's like, yeah, you know the stuff that's important. Just you know, get all the important stuff. Like, you, there are so many things that we would forget to do. Like, we, would we remember to do all the blinds? Would we remember to you know, you know turn off the switch to you know th this or that or what, whatever? It's great to have the, all the stuff right down there. So if you are developing a plan where you want to you know have a plan, a great way of doing that is to have list for yourself so you on the day of you don't have to think you can just go and go through them and now and again just kind of go uh, through uh, through the, the sheets and you know think to yourself is there anything that I've forgotten you know and uh, you can see how I kind of just like made little uh, um, you know uh, additions to it here and I'll print out some new new clean ones later on but it can be a great way of making it so that you don't forget anything because uh, you know when the, when the pressure's on and when time is of the essence it's so easy to you know forget the smallest little things and the, sometimes the smallest little thing can you know be the end of you hopefully not but it's good to have a list <laughs> that's it I hope you found this helpful I hope you find this helpful that if you don't want to have a cell phone or uh, you, you know you know for, for whatever reason you like have an old cell phone you know I get apparently as long as you keep these things charged uh, you can just you know throw, throw them in your car or whatever and you know you'll always have uh, this uh, possibility that you're gonna get a signal that's pretty cool that is uh, that's the most interesting part of this whole test uh, for me that uh, you don't have to pay for active cell service to get these emergency messages I think I'm getting a sunburn right now so I'm gonna wrap up this video I hope you found this helpful and thanks for watching Hey YouTube preppers, here's another video that you might enjoy. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see listed on the screen. They help to support the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and have your name added to that list, the link's below.